we have this cello from Hamburg and it's about around box time. So this is probably the oldest instrument I've ever played on. It's like 1680 something. So a long time ago, even older than my instrument. It's really beautiful. Check it out right here. Looks like it has a birthmark. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about this instrument that is 300 years old and what has it gone through. I'm just looking at it and looking at all the marks, all the dents, and thinking about who has played it in the past, who have made music, what kind of music it was made. I'm just thinking all, all about that just as I'm looking at the instrument. I'm mean, looking at the pegs. It's kind of interesting because usually pegs are black, but this one is the same color as the scroll. And actually somebody decided to take this out because sometimes it kind of bothers the cellist because it's like right behind our right behind our um, head and, and I bump into it. So this is kind of nice. You know what's interesting? As the luthier was mentioning, if you come close to right here, there's an extra piece that the maker added because maybe the maker was not that familiar with uh, cello making. This piece needs to be raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he added this piece. You can see that line right here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of magical because the cello used to be a piece of wood. It's just nothing but like a tree trunk or something. <laughs> it's a tree, it was it once a tree. And you just take it out of the tree and you can see all the lines right here like the tree, and then somebody put his vision into what it can be, the potential. That's kind of magical and amazing. And then you put strings to it, you put a bridge, and you build all these things, and comes the sound. Beautiful, resonant sound. And what's amazing is that 300 years later, Someone like me can visit London and enjoy a beautiful instrument from Germany, from Hamburg, from 300 years ago. Isn't that kind of amazing? Okay, so this bow right here is um, not Jacqueline Dupre's bow, but it's the same maker of the bow that she had in her earlier career. And this is by Dodds. And you may have seen some photographs or some videos of Jacqueline Dupre playing in her early years, uh, playing th this bow. And the characteristic of this maker, Dodds, is the darkness of the wood, which is very unusual. It's very unusual to see a bow this dark, but also another characteristic is that it's very heavy. And the luthier that I was talking to, he was saying that Jacqueline Dupre made her whole career, and you may agree or disagree with that, but that she was, quote, 
attacking the cello. So I think what he really meant to say is because this bow is weighty and has so much power and she was such a powerful woman and powerful cellist and physically she was very strong, you know, she's tall and phys physically very strong. So she really was able to like, you know, for her to play out. because this is, I mean, I'm not juggling the brain, but like that gave me a lot of power just playing a few notes of the Elgar Concerto. Um, and so yeah, this is probably like my bow at home that I have is pretty heavy, but this is even heavier. And for me, I really enjoy that because for me, it feels very effortless. All you have to do is just put your body and your arm weight. And then in addition to the weight of the bow, it draws a beautiful sound. Thank <laughs> you.